Forty years ago today, a peaceful civil rights march in Alabama was plunged into violence. Voting rights activists tried to walk from the town of Selma to the Capitol in Montgomery. They made it only a few blocks to the Edmund Pettus Bridge. There they met state and local police who attacked the demonstrators with billy clubs, tear gas, and bullwhips. News footage of the attack shocked the country and boosted support for the civil rights movement. That march from Selma to Montgomery followed the killing of a young black man named Jimmy Lee Jackson by a state trooper in Marion, Alabama. Commentator John Fleming tracked down the trooper who says he shot the young man. Jimmy Lee Jackson. It's not a name many people know. Outside Alabama's black belt and those involved in the civil rights movement, he's virtually unknown. Bonnard Fowler knows who Jimmy Lee Jackson was. Fowler told me he was the trooper who shot Jackson on February 18, 1965. That was a scary time for Marion, Alabama. Black leadership in town decided to have a peaceful nighttime march. Troopers laid into the marchers with sticks and billy clubs. Some people fled into a place called Max Cafe. Right behind them came about ten troopers, including Bonnard Fowler. The billy clubs started flying, Fowler said, and in the ruckus, he shot Jackson in the stomach. He died a few days later in Selma. Leaders of the civil rights movement were outraged, and from that anger arose the idea of a march to Montgomery. In the 40 years that passed, Jimmy Lee Jackson has been largely forgotten, and former trooper Bonnard Fowler has remained quiet about what happened. It's not that he's unwilling or incapable of talking about it. That night so many years ago is still very clear to him. So when I asked him about it, he set a cool gaze on me and in his matter-of-fact way said, I don't remember how many times I pulled the trigger, but I think I just pulled it once. He paused a bit, looked away toward the woods near his home in deepest Alabama before coming back to his essential point. Jimmy Lee Jackson was not murdered. He was trying to kill me, and I have no doubt in my mind, he continued, that he would have killed me or shot me. That's why my conscience is clear. He's 70 now, this barrel-chested veteran of much that was bad and wrong about the civil rights days. He says he isn't very sorry about anything he was involved in. All that, though, I suppose is irrelevant. The issue here is getting at the truth, as in, did Bonner Fowler fire in self-defense? There's no reason for me not to believe him. Then again, no law enforcement official, including anyone from the FBI, ever bothered to talk to Fowler, he says. So, he says, he's never worried too much about being prosecuted, especially these days. It's a startling kind of confidence he possesses about that, especially when you consider how many of the civil rights era cases have been reopened and tried including the 1963 assassination of Medgar Evers and the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham. In January, Mississippi authorities arrested a man they say helped organize the murders of three civil rights workers in 1964. I don't know what the truth is about Jimmy Lee Jackson, but as Jesus said and civil rights leaders were fond of repeating, the truth shall set me free. But I think freedom in this instance will never come to be, not unless federal or state authorities focus as much attention on the killing of Jackson as they have on other civil rights era cases. Taking a look at what happened that night in Max Cafe is the very least Jimmy Lee Jackson deserves. John Fleming is editor-at-large for the Anniston Star in Alabama.